Sure. The term, speaking truth to power, goes back to the 1950s and the struggle for civil rights and racial equality in the United States. It has since been adopted by journalists and is now considered to be part of the job. But what about when power doesn't speak the truth? In the U.S. these days, there are signs that the mainstream news media have belatedly begun to push back against Donald Trump, who repeatedly, routinely tramples on the facts, the debate this past week being the latest example of that. There are dozens of fact-checking outfits whose specific task is to dissect claims made by politicians and public figures, drill deep into their past statements, statistics and raw data, and test all of that against reality. But how much of an impact does that kind of work have? Does it really make a difference? Are people not happier these days, as one writer puts it, to live in worlds built out of our own facts. The Listening Post's Will Young now on whether we live in a post-fact world or whether rumors of the demise of the truth have been exaggerated. More than 2,700 have been shooting the reality. Absolutely nothing for 99.8%. Fact checking has always been an essential part of journalism. What you have these days is more noise, and it's useful to audiences if you flag up where you're doing your fact checking. And it would also allow us to regain control over the 350 million subscription we pay to customers every week. If you just want access to the fact, you want to cut straight through the noise, through the claims, um, come here and you'll, you'll find it. Our goals are twofold. One, to hold politicians accountable uh, for what they're saying and also to be there for voters. And we really see that as our role, to help voters see through the spin, separate fact from fiction. If you add up all of Trump's ideas, the result would be a loss of 3.4 million jobs. Journalists are supposed to be the people standing and saying, actually, no, what you're being told is untrue. What you're being told is not the whole story. Here's why. If we understand that a piece of news is held up to certain norms of reporting and fact-checking, we are more likely to trust it. If we see this process transparently, then it builds trust. That's why we believe, I think, that fact-checking is now necessary and it should come from somebody independent of the original media outlet. Argentina's first and foremost fact-checking outlet is Chequeado. Their goal, they say, is to protect the public discourse by increasing the cost of lying. While their home is online, Chequeado also has columns in major newspapers and slots on radio and TV. And when Chequeado live fact-checked Argentina's presidential debate, not only readers, but politicians too, took note. Of the five presidential candidates who took part in the debate, four of them got in touch afterwards asking for clarifications. So it's not like what we publish goes unheard. Chequeado disproved a claim made by the president. That wasn't true, and when the vice president was interviewed on the radio, she admitted they'd made a mistake, that Chequeado had made them realize it, and that they wouldn't do it again. Actually, they did do it again, but at least they acknowledged that someone is out there who's paying attention. So what if a politician is caught in a lie and yet goes on to repeat that lie? and a host of others. Take Donald Trump. The Washington Post's fact-checker gives four Pinocchio ratings only to politicians' biggest whoppers. It's given four Pinocchios to nearly two-thirds of Donald Trump's statements. When the Tampa Bay Times PolitiFact team announced their 2015 Lie of the Year award, it couldn't pick just one, but gave it to all the misstatements of the Trump campaign. Case in point, did Trump oppose or support going to war in Iraq? And then I said, total catastrophe. Donald Trump has said several times that he was opposed to the Iraq war. So this is something that we've fact-checked. We went through several different news databases. We were unable to find uh, any piece of evidence that he opposed the war before it started. He has continued to say it, so we certainly have not succeeded in changing the claim. But uh, our work and the work of others pointing this out, uh, I, I think, has become 
become now ingrained in uh, the journalism community. The journalism community may appreciate a good fact check, but what about audiences at large? In the UK, the campaign to take Britain out of the European Union was riddled with misleading claims. Lots of them coming from former journalist and leading voice for Leave, Boris Johnson. Many of Johnson's more outlandish Euro claims were easy enough to dispel. But what about the more elusive truth about the cost of EU membership? Take back control of huge sums of money, £350 million a week, and spend... A figure that was questioned by numerous experts. But perhaps, as Vote Leave's Michael Gove said... I think the people in this country have had enough of experts the £350 million figure kept coming up throughout the campaign. And our first response was to, to look at, right, where did they get it from? Whichever way it was expressed, we would find a way to take it to pieces and get to the actual figure. As the campaign went on, I suppose we were slightly surprised that the campaign kept using it. So, from a reality check point of view, we basically kept repeating what we'd done. There's only so many times we can write the same story over and over again. And then claims get repeated and re repeated and repeated on Twitter or Facebook or different news sites on the internet. A limit or a challenge, I guess, for fact-checking this social media echo chamber. The ability with the internet and social media to really live in um, a bubble and to seek out uh, information that only conforms with your viewpoint. Fact checkers say they are not police for the politicians, that they can't stop our leaders from lying. All they can do is keep the electorate informed. But if 52% of British voters voted out of the European Union, and if Donald Trump has convinced enough Americans that he can make America great again, are we not living in a post-fact world? Once something has become true, in people's minds, then there is very little that an independent fact checker can do to correct it. Campaigns like the Trump campaign or the Brexit campaign and many others across the world share a certain anti-establishment approach. There is no place in this for somebody who has studied the issue to come and say, look, as it happens, Trump is lying to you about immigration or Brexit will be a disaster for the economy. This establishment includes experts, it includes the media. What campaigns like this do is that they go out and they tell people, don't believe anything that you're told, so there's no place in this for fact. I don't believe that journalism is going to stop bad information, nor is it the case that we live in a world where people no longer care whether what politicians say is true or not. A journalist isn't a prosecutor, isn't a judge, and is not qualified to judge or to decide how people should vote. People make up their own minds as to who they wish to vote for, and sometimes that has nothing to do with good sense. And that is a fact.